Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Monarch, and my dearest disciples, my dissenters. Today's video will be one based on apologetics, upon the teleological argument. Rationality Rule has recently uploaded a video that was very balanced, very diverse in its critiques of this argument. We posited that there is the watchmaker fallacy, and the point of this video is to prove the fallacy of the watchmaker fallacy. A very worthy series of arguments posed, one that deserves my attention. We shall begin with my stance on the theological argument. My understanding of it is that the universe isn't necessarily created due to its complexity. It is the fact that it is constructed that means there is a creator, and that the complexity of it is, in fact, a result of its construction. I will give you a few examples. All matter is constructed at, above, or below the atomic level. Furthermore, DNA found in all life is, in fact, a series of four layers that are coded, among other examples. It is in the complexity of the universe's composition that we do find, yes, evidence of a creator through the construction of it. This understanding is a little bit more tiered than the other, more traditional one. Though bear in mind that it in fact addresses more points and it allows for me to work in much more information. And even the common atheists would agree with these modifications that the higher powers, there are higher powers at play, I should say. Ones actually that they themselves confess, and ones that we'll get into later, so stay tuned. Turning our attention to overturning some of the objections raised. There is a good old false analogy fallacy. <laughs> and no one, no one is claiming that the universe is a watch or a building or anything like that. Anyone with an auxiliary ability would agree with me or indicate that it is a true analogy. The difference between true and false analogies lie within what aspect of the two things are being compared. I will give you an example. The universe being a watch, or rather the universe being analogous to a watch in one respect. A clock runs like clockwork, keeping track of time. The universe runs like clockwork, sustaining life in its own existence. Here we see that both are functioning like clockwork, that there are a, a series of systems and mechanisms in place to ensure that each respective thing is doing its job as intended. Take another, the building. A building means constructed for the sake of storage, inhabitation, and other purposes. The universe has been constructed for the purpose of inhabitation, storage, and matter, among other things. And taking a look at both of these examples of analogies, we can see that, yes, they do hold true. They hold up to any sort of form of scrutiny that you can apply because they function precisely like, not precisely like, but the idea is that they do function in a manner that is similar to a watch or a building. These are mere illustrations and are in truth not indications that the universe is a watch or is a building, otherwise we'd have to apply the same levels of scrutiny such as a watch was designed in the 15th century, and therefore the universe must be designed in the 15th century. No one is using this sort of reasoning, and that is not the nature of an analogy. Turning our attention, and by the way, to do I insert that is, in fact, in this case that we, you know, any theist is arguing. The universe is a building or is a watch, is in fact a straw man. 
But now we shall turn our attention to the false cause fallacy. One who raises this objection claims that just because the universe does exist, it doesn't mean that there is clear, not when it's been decisively proved. And the award for the slothful induction and the appeal to ignorance fallacies shall go to whoever was lazy enough to raise the false cause fallacy. For one thing, debates between theists and atheists are nothing new. They've been happening for a long while in forms of media such as this, and will continue to go on. No one on our side is more right than the other to claim absolute victory. Not until the debate's over and the smoke's clear. Even less is anyone able to claim no proof. Second, the use of appropriate metrics is paramount in attempting to claim that there is no correlation between capacity to design and level of complexity. The theistic worldview most often maintains that an omnipotent, extra-dimensional entity is responsible for the creation of all things. Therefore, we must use metaphysical means to address the existence of such a being. It then follows that if everything is designed, all complexity emerges out of the ability to design and is contingent upon one's capacity to design. Where science fails in attempting to debunk this thesis is that it uses physical means. It is focused upon the natural, not the supernatural. The material and not the immaterial. I would then contest that scientists are not among the best equipped individuals by profession to either affirm or deny the existence of God. A video will eventually come out where I'll delve into this further. But now let's examine the most prevalent argument raised by the atheist, explaining the complexity of life. Evolution. Where the most popular understanding of evolution falls short is that it ignores the fact that in and of itself, evolution is an agent of design, a higher power, if you would, through the phenomenon of natural selection. The atheistic position then fails to hold up to its own scrutiny, and even natural selection is creative, it is a higher power, it is in a sense conscious, due to the empirical interplay, empirically observable interplay, of governing forces and principles in the natural order in the universe. Yet even still, the video by Rationality Rules that I'm referencing here, well, he claims the, uh, the absolute infallibility of natural selection. And you know what? I do agree with the infallibility of natural selection. What I don't agree with is its usage, because it, as any other principle, can very much be misapplied and adulterated. The atheist will err in applying it to the span of time and the magnitude with which they do, because it is all predicated upon the notion that all oh, physical, mental, and otherwise immaterial changes to a group of life forms happened over the course of a very, very long while, millions and probably millions of years, in spite of several mass extinction events, and the volatility of carbon dating uh, as opposed to other sort of metrics more readily available once they would have used consults, such as soft tissue. And it is in claiming, dear viewer, that the power of evolution is absolute over any theist argument. Well, it's not only just self refuting, it's also the Texas sharpshooter fallacy, where victory is claimed before discussion including with false premises and an inapplicable array of metrics. Instead, the atheist should aim to go ahead and use an explanatory system rather than predicating the entirety of their argument upon a platform of one single argument being evolution through natural selection. And then there's the absurdist claims that uh, a theist would be using the special pleading fallacy, 
where it's claimed that God should be proven to be an exception to the rule before granting him that exception. Other than that, until they raise the, uh, the self-refuting fallacy. They use either one of these, or both, in fronting this argument. In comparing a watch being complex to the universe being complex, and claiming that the complexity necessitates a designer, means that even the designer is needed for a designer to be designed. Now, anyone with a rudimentary grasp of theology knows that I need to defend the teleological argument against this laughable strawman. We're talking about a being that is outside of the physical realm, outside of time, acting in all things he's doing all at once, and is infinite. The funny thing about infinity is that no matter how you cut it, you only end up with infinity. You can't make infinity, uh, and you can't even, you can portion it off, but you'll, no matter how much you try to take away from it, you only have infinity. What's more, infinity can beget infinity. As an exercise, I want you to remember that one silly little wives tale uh, about a Jewish carpenter, the perfect uh, balance between um, man and deity. He, uh, he did a bunch of miracles too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 he died across for all of our sins. Oh, but what's his name? Oh yes, Jesus, yes. Oh well, come to think of it. The undesignable was in fact designed by himself in some sense. Rather, he has the capacity to even do such a thing. And he even designed all the rules. How is that for an exception? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you even more embarrassing strawman fallacies from the side that claims the teleological argument is predicated on fallacies. Also worth noting is the erroneous notion that for multiple sorts of design products, it is necessary that there are multiple designers rather than one. As alluded to before, I'd agree that there are multiple creative designers in the universe. They simply have a common origin, being God. Similarly to how evolution is claimed for a common origin, some atheists also claim that something can't come from nothing. The problem with this argument of theirs is that it refutes any scientific model for the beginning of the universe. Like the Big Bang. Kind of say that something has to come from nothing. Yeah, you know, it's an appropriate solution if you do pick a theistic route. But now, I've also heard claims that proving the teleological argument doesn't necessarily mean it's a Christian God. And now, this would be an excellent time to leverage science to the fullest, to cross examine the identity of this creator. And finally, there is the notion that an omnipotent, omnibenevolent creator couldn't possibly leave such flaws and uh, useless aspects in biology. No, he didn't make such blunders. If you knew, even rudimentary, rudimentary Christian theology, you'd very much know that we sabotage the design. We exile ourselves from a perfect domain, the best of all worlds, one that would and it was capable of sustaining man perfectly, the Garden of Eden. Which is a topic for another day, uh, but contrary to the short-sighted entitled position that no god would create such flaws, the Christian god has the patience to work all these hindrances for the best, empowering each person according to their own needs and making up for such problems not now, then for certain he does in the next life. Or he will, in fact, reward anyone for having to deal with such trials in their life. Will award people with a very perfect state of being, the Avum Stasis. Also another topic for another day. Now, dear viewer, if you've managed to survive through the, uh, this fiasco of the video, Numering for every single contention that they raised, specifically rationality rules, the fallacy of every single fallacy that you pointed out. I'd like to thank you very much for sticking around. Though, I'd like to award anyone who has in fact been so fanatic 
in distributing these final, uh, fallacies, who has predicated their arguments solely on these fallacies. To these fallacy spammers, I'd like to present the fallacy fallacy, which is the fallacy of going ahead and taking a look at a perceived fallacy in someone else's argument and automatically denying their argument. In doing so, it's a pretty damning fallacy. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, yet again, hanging around till the end. If you haven't already, subscribe, like the video, turn on notifications, and comment down below. Or, burn me in the comments and tell me why you've disproven everything that I've said. I look forward to it. Now then, peace be upon you all, and until the next time.